As I've said before a number of times on this channel, I absolutely love finding those occasional hidden gems, or those, at the very least, underappreciated gems within the vast genre of horror, but more specifically in stuff like creature feature or monster-based horror or whatever sub-genre might appeal to you personally. For me, it's generally monster movies. This one isn't a straight-up monster film. In fact, it's not really a monster film at all, but it is a genre film, it is in kind of a sub-genre within horror, and it will definitely have its fans, and doubtless already has. Now, the movie in question is Cub, which I believe is originally called Welt, or Welt in German. This is a German movie, and oftentimes some of, at least in my experience, the best undervalued, at least in English-speaking countries, the most undervalued horror movies tend to be the ones which aren't in English. And that's not all too surprising, because English people don't generally like reading subtitles. Personally, I have no issue with it. I love seeing how other countries approach horror, and oftentimes they do it in such a drastically different way that it's really refreshing to watch. This is definitely that kind of occasion. At the same time though, I don't want to get anyone's hopes too high because I didn't love this film. I'm reviewing it because it's something a little bit different within the genres and the subgenres, and I believe that it's a movie which is definitely worth watching at least once. And it's the kind of horror movie which I would define as a nice diversion. It's a nice change from the usual, from the norm of horror. But beyond that, it wouldn't break into my top favourites, and it wouldn't necessarily even be a movie that I score overly high. So what's the basic concept for those who are unfamiliar? Well, Cub centres around a group of cubs, or boy scouts, cub scouts, whatever you want to call them, who are going away to camp. Their camp is otherwise occupied, so they have to relocate to another camp, a bit further in the woods. A camp where some nasty stuff happened in the past and there are some people still there, Hills Have Eyes style, who aren't necessarily desirable. One in particular is featured heavily in the artwork of the film, who is in effect the cub, a feral child. He is probably the coolest character in the film. He's got a great character design in terms of the mask, it's made out of part of uh, the bark of a tree and it works. It looks cool. It looks, in fact, like what could have turned out to be an iconic horror mask. It didn't really turn out that way for the film, but it could have easily been. And to be honest, again, that kind of sums up this movie for me. It could have been. This movie is a virtual buffet of opportunities which could have been made more use of. Not that it's bad, not by any means, but there were so many occasions where it felt as if they could have done something better, or they could have done something, at least in my opinion of course, a little bit tighter, maybe a little bit quicker. And speaking of making the movie tighter, it's only 81 minutes long. That's really short for a horror film. But still, I have to say it felt like a lot more than that. This felt like more like an hour and 40, hour 45, and that's not really a good sign. And to be honest, although it was only 81 minutes, the essential concept of the film feels like it could have satisfactorily been done in 20 or 30 minutes as a short film. I don't know if it was based on a short film or a short story originally, but it definitely, no question, could be done as a good short film rather than the length that it is. And it would have worked better, because one of the primary issues which I have with Cub is the pacing. It's very slow, and it feels... I would say petty a lot of the time. A lot of the squabbles in the film feel totally unnecessary. There's some very contrived drama, not just between the kids, which you'd expect, but between the counsellors as well, the adults who are supposed to be better than that. Now, that may or may not be realistic to real life. Of course, there are some people who shouldn't be in that position of responsibility because they don't know how to cope with it. But still, it's kind of cliched and sometimes it did feel like a bit of lazy writing. Oh, we need this to happen, let's just make it so that the adults don't do their job properly. It's understandable, and it's certainly realistic, but I expect better than that. And that's why it was a little bit disappointing in that regard. Other things which I did like were the look of the film, in particular. It's a fantastic looking film. The camera quality is excellent, the shots are great. 
The place where they chose to film isn't necessarily the most visually rich. It has some similarities to movies like Backcountry in that way, but Backcountry was still kind of better shot than this one. This one has better camera work, but the scenery isn't used to its full in this one. There's a lot of nighttime stuff, a lot of dark scenes, a lot of shrouded scenes in general, and it feels again just like wasted opportunity. They could have done more with the visuals. And as far as the horror factor, you do get some interesting deaths and some interesting traps, if you will, and they were cool to see, but the problem is the majority of them happen either off screen or at the end of the film. So you've got such a long build up, or what feels like a long build up, to not necessarily the best of payoffs. If you're watching it expecting Saw in the woods, you'll be disappointed because that's not what you get. What you get is kind of a survival slash wants to be a coming of age movie, but doesn't really deliver totally on either. It's an interesting mix of a lot of different subgenres together, which works on some points, but doesn't work in others. It's not a bad film by any means, and as I said at the start of this review, I would definitely recommend to people checking it out once if you are a genre fan. And I do feel that this is one of those interesting movies where it gives off a very distinct vibe that some people will thrive on and absolutely love. It didn't do it for me, but one of the things that I didn't necessarily love, but I liked that they did it, was how mean-spirited the film will sometimes get. That helped to kind of save it a lot of the time. Decisions that are made, moments that happen, entire scenes sometimes are based around mean-spirited decisions or characters. And although, again, that can sometimes feel like a cop-out, that did feel much more justified because there are certain characters who are set up to be different, to be aggressive, to be outsiders, and they are not cliches. That's what separates that from the cliched adults sometimes. And that aspect of it I did like. The mean-spirited nature did work for a film like this. It gave it that kind of more raw, aggressive, unforgiving feel. But once again, don't take that as a recommendation for people who love gory, harsh survival horror, because it, it doesn't deliver that. It just attempts to. Again, tries, and you've got to commend it for that, but doesn't necessarily deliver all of the goods. But what about individual scores? How am I going to compare it to other movies that are perhaps similar? Although it is a relatively unique film, at least compared to ones which I've seen, and that was nice. But either way, how does it compare? Well, first of all, as always, we have the story and the plot. And for that, I'm going to give it a 5. Now, for those who are maybe new to the channel or unfamiliar with my way of scoring, I give every movie in every category a starting score of a 5, before I've even seen the film. Because to me, 5 is what every film should be. That's your default line. The benchmark, if you will. If it drops below a 5 in any particular way, it's performing badly. And of course, the lower the score, the worse it's going. Anything higher than a 5, by definition, is getting better and better, all the way up to a perfect 10. So for this film to give it a 5, that's not overly bad or overly good, it just does what it needs to do. There was definitely some things that could have been done a lot better, which is why the score isn't above par, but at the same time there are plenty of things that stop it from being anywhere near a bad film. It's not a bad film, not at all. As far as the characters go, the casting, the interplay between them, the motivations, the decisions, well for that I'm going to give it a 6, a little bit above par, because I did like the casting, there were a couple of faces which I did recognise, I did like some of the interplay which they had, some of it as I said was a bit cliched, but that's to be expected in the genre, and I did like the characters overall, a couple of the villains, if you will, are quite good. And yeah, that's, that's about it. I can't really say a huge amount about it without spoiling stuff, but I like the characters enough to rate it above par. But they weren't amazing at the same time, which is why it's still a 6. As far as the visuals go, the effects, the shots of the film, the way it was filmed, not just gore, I'm going to give it a 7, and that is the highest score of the bunch, because as I said, the camera work is fantastic, it looks great, it's a very pretty film. Not necessarily the choice of shots, but the quality of the way the film looks is very high. I also did like a lot of the choice of scenery, the choice of shots, the way 
certain characters are lingered on sometimes. And the nighttime stuff was shot pretty well. It wasn't just black and you couldn't see anything, you actually could see really well at night time. As far as the audio goes, the soundtrack, of course, special effects, sound design as well, I'm going to give it another 6 again, which is of course a little bit above par. And one of the reasons why I'm rating it above par is because the sound design is pretty good, it's crisp, it's clear, it does its job for the majority of the time, and the music does its job. It's got a pretty good soundtrack. but the thing which at the same time holds it back from being even higher is that I've definitely heard the soundtrack before so I don't think it's unique to this film unless I've heard it from this film in other things which I don't think is the case I have definitely heard this movie's soundtrack somewhere else I haven't checked out what it's called I could research that but I just haven't cared to yet but that kind of held it back a little bit and finally, for the rewatchability factor, the entertainment, the fun factor, which of course is always the most subjective of the five categories to me personally, I'm again going to give it a five, which is our default score. And that, I think, is accurate to this film. It is, I would say, a 50-50 movie. There's a 50-50 chance that you'll like it or won't, and there's a 50-50 chance that if you like it, you'll watch it again. Because for me, I did like it, but will I watch it again? Not necessarily. I would watch it again with someone else, and as I said before, it's not a bad film, not by any means. It just feels almost as though it's slightly frustrating, because I want to love it. There are so many things in there that were done well, and so much potential that wasn't delivered on, that it could have been amazing. This could have been one of my favourite undervalued horror films. But unfortunately, it took its time a little bit too much, the pacing was a little bit slow, and there were a couple of opportunities which were a bit contrived or just wasted in general, which could have very easily been done better. But either way, as a tabulation of all five of those categories put together, I'm giving Cub, or Velt, a score of 2.9. Which doesn't sound that great, but of course, again, the baseline score of any movie is 2.5, so it is above par. Overall then, if you haven't seen Cub, I mentioned earlier, I would recommend that genre fans, horror fans, check it out at least once. And then, of course, make your own opinion on the film. I'd love to hear from those who have seen it before what you thought of it because I think this is very much so one of those movies that could swing either way. And who knows? I've only seen it once and I made notes on it, so maybe down the line I may end up liking it more or less. I often can't tell initially with movies like this, but we'll see how it goes. I've mulled it over, but we'll see with time if that changes. But overall, that's it for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.